Hey everybody, I had a request on a previous video on how to make GIFs pop up uh, for your stream as well as, you know, make some sounds apply as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get through a quick tutorial on that. Uh, there are two possible options for this. You, it does not require the pro version um, specifically to be able to do this. Um, the only reason you would need the pro upgrade for touch portal is if you wanted to use events by themselves. You can, however, add these functionalities to a button. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that first to show you what that looks like. We're going to call this uh, GIF button. You don't have to have any unpressed actions on here. This is all going to be events. And we're just going to trigger this off a chat, a message from Twitch. So that's not the right thing. So if anybody sends um, GIF1, we'll just call it GIF1. So if anybody sends me a message that starts with the exclamation point GIF1, we want to trigger this event. Um, so first, we're going to actually have to get something set up in OBS. So I'm going to go ahead and find a GIF real quick. Okay, so now we have a GIF that we want to load up. Um, so what you're going to do is in OBS, um, what I've done is I've created a scene that's just specifically for GIFs. And the reason I did this is I can put all of my animations and stuff on one scene and then use that scene as a scene source in other scenes. That way I only have one place I have to manage. So after you create that, let's go ahead and add our image source. We'll call this Homer, because it's going to be a Homer Simpson. And we're going to go ahead and find my Homer Simpson GIF. Um, I would say unload the image while not showing, just so it's not always loaded. This is a pretty small GIF, but we'll just have it, uh, you know, display in the center of the screen. You can use transform and you can make it be specifically in a sp certain spot. So I'm just going to center it to the screen. All right, so we're going to leave this as hidden, right? Because we don't want it to show up all the time. And then what we're going to do is come over back to our touch portal button. And this kind of process will be the same thing we do on an event as well. Um, but this is what we want to do. So we want to do a uh, OBS source visibility. So I, you can typically use toggle um, unless you need to specifically say on or off. And then, um, actually, we're going to show you show, because if two people send this, I don't want it to uh, have to, like, turn it off and then turn it back on. And there's a few ways of playing audio in Touch Portal. There's uh, the built-in audio, where you just select play audio, and you can select your uh, MP3 AIF Wave MPEG-4 file um, here, and that will just play out, your out of your default um, desktop output. There's also some plugins that are available. Plugins on, or do require the Pro Upgrade. Uh, Soundbox is one of them. That one allows you to play a sound but automatic and select the output you want it to go on. And then there's Soundpad, which allows you to interface to the Soundpad application, which handles a lot of the stuff internally uh, in, on its own for sending it out over your microphone um, or uh, your, just your normal audio. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go find a sound that we wanna play. Well, let's use the uh, hey listen sound that I have. So that's going to be here. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that, uh, play the audio, and then what we need to do is we need to wait. So there's a wait for timer action. And so you basically want to wait for however long your sound is or however long you want the audio and the, um, the image to play. And so we'll say, I think this is pretty quick. So we'll say 200, you know, or we'll just do two seconds. So for two seconds, we're going to wait. And then what we'll do is we'll stop all playing audio. So this will make sure that this is stopped. And then this will, um, we'll go ahead and duplicate this action. So you can right click and go duplicate all selected actions. This is the only selected action since I'm the one that clicked on it. Drag that down to the bottom and hide. So in this scenario, um, on a button, that means that this button has to be active on the page that you have inside of Touch Portal. So if you're on, maybe you have an OBS specific page or a streaming specific page, that page would have to be active on your device uh, that you're using, so your phone or your tablet, for it to actually execute this action or this event. 
That's why we would normally use an event for this. Events also have some other functionality. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So now you'll see the GIF button shows up here and I'm looking at it on my tablet as well. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this to work. Uh, so we're gonna do GIF one. Hey, listen. All right, so I typed GIF one, it fired my event, showed my image on my OBS and played a sound. Uh, so pretty simple, right? We can replicate that same functionality, but in an event. So if you have Pro, I highly recommend using events. It's gonna be a lot better for you um, because they're they're global. They don't require you to be on a specific page. So if we're gonna go to events, um, functionality is very similar. Uh, you click add event, you get an editor window. I wanna call this Homer GIF. The event is gonna be uh, uh, Twitch on chat message event. And we're gonna say when it contains GIF one, everybody. And then I'll explain this stuff here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and go back to my other button and just copy out the actions. So you can hit control and left click, copy all selected actions. That way I'm not having to do this twice. So now I have an event. Um, so that means that I can be on any page on my uh, touch portal application and not have to worry about this event not firing. Obviously, if you already you have this on a button as well as in an event, and you're on that page that has that button on event action, you're gonna fire it twice. Well, you don't wanna do that. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that other button here in a second. So say you don't want people to be spamming this in chat. So you wanna have it happen, and maybe you only want it to play every five seconds. So this cooldown timer says, don't fire this action if we haven't hit the cooldown time yet. So this is very similar to like uh, channel point redemption, uh, cooldown timers or anything like that. So in this scenario, I wanna have this be, I only want them to fire this every five seconds. So this is in milliseconds. So it's whatever number of seconds times a thousand. So obviously if it's less than a thousand, it's gonna be less than a second. And then Q lane, you can have up to six. So zero, one through five or not queued. Not queued means, um, it doesn't really have any way of linking them together. Um, but what we can do is we can put something on a queue lane. So say you have multiple GIF interactions and you want them to happen one right after another. You can set up a queue lane. So we'll just use Q0 for this one. And so we have GIF1, maybe we have GIF2 or another action that sends a GIF. You can put them on the same queue lane and then Touch Portal will put them in a, a priority queue of first in, what's called first in, first out. Somebody sends in GIF one and then immediately sends GIF two. It won't fire until this actions set is done. And the reason we still we still need to have the wait in here because Touch Portal basically is fire and forget. So each one of these actions fires, but doesn't wait for it to finish. So play audio doesn't wait for the length of the time of this audio for it to to go to the next action. It immediately goes to the next action, and that's why we use the wait for time or two. And then we'll use stop all playing audio again and the hide the scene. So then uh, we're gonna go ahead and click save. Now we have this. I'm gonna go ahead and go and delete this button because I don't need it anymore. Now we have this event. And if I go here and type GIF1, what you'll see is this event should highlight and kind of show you that it's firing. Hey, listen! Right, but now if I send GIF1 too quick, you see that it flashed red. Because the cooldown timer hadn't finished yet. So now let's say we want GIF 1 and GIF 2, okay? So we'll add another GIF. Found a GIF we're going to use. Uh, we're going to call this banana GIF. Same sort of thing. So we're going to say on chat message event, we'll also do a 5,000 sec or five second timer on that in the same queue lane, right? So uh, we'll say that's GIF 2. Um, and then I'm going to go over here and add that GIF. So an image, banana. Unload the image. We'll move this to the center and scale it up a little bit. Uh, by the way, if you guys didn't know, um, OBS put in a re uh, redo or undo command. So Control Z, like any other p platform, now uses uh, undo. Now we have that, and I want to show not have that one displayed because obviously we don't want it to be mixed between the two, right? 
So now we're gonna go back over here. I'm just gonna copy these same events because we're gonna do something similar. So copy those, paste them here. And now you'll see I actually have banana as an option for my source. But now we wanna change the sound that needs to be played. So let's use, I don't really have a good one, but uh, we'll just do the FBI open up sound. So what this will do is this will play that song and we'll say this is three seconds long and we'll hit save. Now if I hit GIF2, okay. So now if I hit GIF1 hey, and GIF2, listen. you see it fired both of them. Now let's say this one, let's make this five seconds. And we'll leave this one as five seconds as well. That way I have a little bit more time to be able to do, to show this to you. GIF one. Hey, GIF listen. Two. You can see that it's going to queue it up correctly. So that's why you would want to use these queue lanes so you can have the interaction from your chat, either through channel points or whatever, um, and still interface uh, and show your, your GIF and your sound. Um, as I said, there's some other options, which are SoundPad or SoundBox. You can also use VoiceMod if you're using VoiceMod to um, to play your sounds. It doesn't matter what's playing your sound, but you just kind of do the same, so same sort of thing. Play audio or trigger your sound SoundPad or your SoundBox call or VoiceMod. Or, or if you end up developing your own plugin, you'd use that. Um, but I think that about wraps it up on how to add GIFs to a, uh, an event. Um, I will show you kind of real quick how to use those in a scene. So uh, I have this game time scene, so you can see this is recording what I'm currently showing. And if I wanted to uh, add the GIFs to this, I would use a scene source, okay? So you select a uh, new source, click scene, select, mine's called TP GIFs, okay? So now the cool thing is, is that this is a full size of my screen and if I type in GIF1, hey, listen. it's now going to show me in the middle, but I don't have to worry about changing any of these. They're still tying to the scene TP GIFs, but they showed up on a different scene that I have set up, which is really cool and really helpful for managing all of your OBS settings or setups um, using nested scenes, basically is what they're called. Or scenes as sources. Um, so now, if I ever wanted to just add more gifts, I'd only have to add them to TP gifts, and I could use that on any any screen. So, say I have my tutorial screen, and I want to add gifts here, I would do the same thing. All I have to do is hit as a scene source TP gifts, and now if I did it again, hey, listen. There you go. There's no need to reconfigure anything. You just add that nested scene to your obs and there you have it hope you guys uh follow along and uh enjoyed the video feel free to visit the touch portal discord i'm a mod in the discord as well as support so um if you have any questions feel free to ask there or you can ask them in the youtube chat hope you guys have a great day and i'll catch you in the next one